Sections 30 through 41 of Of Holy Virginity, De Virginitate by St. Augustine of Hippo, translated by Charles John Cornish, 1810 to 1870. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. You also, who have not yet made this vow, who are able to receive it, receive it. Run with perseverance, that you may obtain. Take ye each his sacrifices, and enter ye into the courts of the Lord, not of necessity having power over your own will for not as you shall not commit adultery you shall not kill can it so be said you shall not wed the former are demanded the latter are offered if the latter are done they are praised unless the former are done they are condemned in the former the lord commands us what is due but in the latter if you shall have spent anything more on his return he will repay you think of whatever that be within his wall a place named much better than of sons and of daughters think of an eternal name there who unfolds of what kind that name shall be yet wherever it shall be it shall be eternal by believing and hoping and loving this you have been able not to shun marriage as forbidden but to fly past it as allowed whence the greatness of this service unto the undertaking of which we have according to our strength exhorted the more excellent and divine it is, the more does it warn our anxiety to say something not only concerning most glorious chastity, but also concerning safest humility. When, then, such as make profession of perpetual chastity, comparing themselves with married persons, shall have discovered that, according to the scripture, the others are below both in work and wages, both in vow and reward, let what is written straightway come into their mind. By how much you have are great, by so much humble yourself in all things and you shall find favour before god the measure of humility for each has been given from the measure of his greatness itself unto which pride is full of danger which lays the greater weight against persons the greater they be on this follows envying as a daughter in her train forsooth pride straightway gives birth to her nor is she ever without such a daughter and companion by which two evils, that is, pride and envying, is the devil a devil. Therefore it is against pride, the mother of envying, that the whole Christian discipline chiefly wars. For this teaches humility, whereby both to gain and to keep charity, of which, after that it has been said, charity envies not, as though we were asking the reason how it comes to pass that it envies not, he straightway added, is not puffed up, as though he should say on this account it has not envying in that neither has it pride therefore the teacher of humility christ first emptied himself taking the form of a servant made in the likeness of men and found in fashion as a man he humbled himself made obedient even unto death even the death of the cross but his teaching itself how carefully it suggests humility and how earnest and instant it is in commanding this who can easily unfold and bring together all witnesses for proof of this matter this let him essay to do or do whatever shall wish to write a separate treatise on humility but of this present work the end proposed is different and it has been undertaken on a matter so great as that it has chiefly to guard against pride wherefore a few witnesses which the lord deigns to suggest in my mind i proceed to mention from out the teaching of christ concerning humility such as perhaps may be enough for my purpose his discourse the first which he delivered to his disciples at greater length began from this blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven and these without all controversy we take to be humble the faith of that centurion he on this account chiefly praised and said that he had not found in israel so great faith because he believed with so great humility as to say i am not worthy that you should come under my roof whence also matthew for no other reason said that he came unto jesus whereas luke most plainly signifies that he came not unto him himself but sent his friends save that by his most faithful humility he himself came unto him more than they whom he sent whence also is that of the prophet the lord is very high and has respect unto things that are lowly but what are very high he notes afar off assuredly as not coming unto him whence also he says to that woman of canaan o woman great is your faith be it done unto you as you will whom above he had called a dog and had made answer 
and that the bread of the sons was not to be cast to her and this as she taking with humility had said even so lord for the dogs also eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table and thus what by continual crying she obtained not by humble confession she earned hence also those who are set forth praying in the temple the one a pharisee the other a publican for the sake of those who esteem to themselves just and despise the rest of men and the confession of sins is set before the reckoning up of merits and assuredly the pharisee was rendering thanks unto god by reason of those things wherein he was greatly self-satisfied i render thanks to you says he that i am not even as the rest of men unjust extortioners adulterers even as also this publican i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all things whatsoever i possess but the publican was standing afar off not daring to lift up his eyes to heaven but beating his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner but there follows the divine judgment verily i say unto you the publican went down from the temple justified more than that pharisee then the cause is shown why this is just forasmuch as he who exalts himself shall be humbled and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted therefore it may come to pass that each one both shun real evils and reflect on real goods in himself and render thanks for these unto the father of lights from whom comes down every best gift and every perfect gift and yet be rejected by reason of the sin of haughtiness if through pride even in his thought alone which is before god he insults other sinners and especially when confessing their sins in prayer unto whom is due not upbraiding with arrogance but pity without despair what is it that when his disciples were questioning among themselves who of them should be greater he set a little child before their eyes saying unless you shall be as this child you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven did he not chiefly command humility and set in it the desert of greatness or when unto the sons of zebedee desiring to be as his side in lofty seats he so made answer as that they should rather think of having to drink the cup of his passion wherein he humbled himself even unto death even the death of the cross then with proud desire demand to be preferred to the rest what did he show save that he would be a bestower of exaltation upon them who should first follow him as a teacher of humility and now in that when about to go forth unto his passion he washed the feet of his disciples and most openly taught them to do for their fellow disciples and fellow servants this which he their lord and master had done for them how greatly did he command humility and in order to commend this he chose also that time wherein they were looking on him as immediately about to die with great longing assuredly about to retain in their memory this especially which their master whom they were to imitate had pointed out to them as the last thing but he did this at such that time which surely he could have done on other days also before wherein he had been conversant with them at which time if it were done this same would indeed be delivered but certainly would not be so received whereas then all christians have to guard humility forasmuch as it is from christ that they are called christians whose gospel no one considers with care but that he discovers him to be a teacher of humility specially it is becoming that they be followers and keepers of this virtue who excel the rest of men in any great good in order that they may have a great care of that which i set down in the beginning by how much great you are great by so much humble yourselves in all things and you shall find grace before god wherefore because perpetual continence and specially virginity is a great good in the saints of god they must with all watchfulness beware that it be not corrupted with pride paul the apostle censures evil and unmarried women curious and prating and says that this fault comes of idleness but at the same time says he being idle they learn to go about to houses but not only idle but curious also and prating speaking what they ought not of these he had said above but younger widows avoid for when they have passed their time in delights they wish to wed to christ having condemnation in that they have made void their first faith that is have not continued in that which they had vowed at the first and yet he says not they marry but they wish to marry for many of them are recalled from marrying not by love of a noble purpose but of fear of open shame 
which also itself comes of pride whereby persons fear to displease men more than god these therefore who wish to marry and do not marry on this account because they cannot with impunity who would do better to marry than to be burned that is than to be laid waste in their very conscience by the hidden flame of lust who repent of their profession and who feel their confession irksome unless they correct and set right their heart and by the fear of god again overcome their lust must be accounted among the dead whether they pass their time in delights whence the apostle says but she who passes her time in delights living is dead or whether in labors and fastings which are useless where there is no correction of the heart and serve rather for display than amendment i do not for my part impose on such a great regard for humility in whom pride itself is confounded and blood-stained by wound of conscience nor on such as are drunken or covetous or who are lying in any other kind whatever of damnable disease at the same time that they have profession of bodily continence and through perverse matters are at variance with their own name do i impose this great anxiety about pious humility unless haply in these evils they shall dare even to make a display of themselves unto whom it is not enough that the punishments of these are deferred nor am i treating of these in whom there is a certain aim of pleasing either by more elegant dress than the necessity of so great profession demands or by remarkable manner of binding the head whether by bosses of hair swirling forth or by covering so yielding that the fine network below appears unto these we must give precepts not as yet concerning humility but concerning chastity itself or virgin modesty give me one who makes profession of perpetual continence and who is free from these and all such faults and spots of conduct for this one i fear pride for this so great good i am in alarm from swelling of arrogance the more there is in any one on account of which to be self-pleased the more i fear lest by pleasing self he pleases not him who resists the proud but unto the humble gives grace certainly we are to contemplate in christ himself the chief instruction and pattern of virginal purity what further precept then concerning humility shall i give to the continent than what he says to all learn of me in that i am meek and lowly of heart when he had made mention above of his greatness and wishing to show this very thing how great he was and how little he had been made for our sakes says i confess to you o father lord of heaven and earth in that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them unto little children even so o father in that so it has been pleasing before you all things have been delivered unto me of my father and no one knows the son save the father and no one knows the father save the son and he to whom the son shall have will to reveal him come unto me all you who labor and are burdened and i will refresh you take my yoke upon you and learn of me in that i am meek and lowly of heart he he unto whom the father has delivered all things and whom no one knows but the father and whom alone and he unto whom he shall have will to reveal him knows the father says not learn of me to make the world or to raise the dead but in that i am meek and lowly of heart o saving teaching o saving teaching o teacher and lord of mortals unto whom death was pledged and passed on in the cup of pride he would not teach what himself was not he would not bid what himself did not i see you o good jesus with the eyes of faith which you have opened for me as in an assembly of the human race crying out and saying come unto me and learn of me what i beseech you through whom all things were made o son of god and the same who was made among all things o son of man to learn what of you come we to you for that i am meek says he and lowly of heart is it to this that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden in you are brought that we learn this of you as a great thing that you are meek and lowly of heart is it so great a thing it to be little that it could not at all be learned unless it were brought to pass by you who art so great so indeed it is for by no other way is there found out rest for the soul save when the unquiet swelling has been dispersed 
whereby it was great unto itself when it was not sound unto you let them hear you and let them come to you and let them learn of you and to be meek and lowly who seek your mercy and truth by living unto you unto you not unto themselves let him hear this laboring and laden who is weighed down by his burden so as not to dare to lift up his eyes to heaven that sinner beating his breast and drawing near from afar let him hear the centurion not worthy that you should enter under his roof let him hear zacchaeus chief of publicans restoring fourfold the gains of damnable sins let her hear the woman in the city a sinner by so much the more full of tears at your feet the more alien as she had been from your steps let them hear the harlots and publicans who enter into the kingdom of heaven before the scribes and pharisees let them hear every kind of such ones feastings with whom were cast in your teeth as a charge forsooth as though by whole persons who sought not a physician whereas you came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance all these when they are converted unto you easily grow meek and are humble before you mindful of their own most unrighteous life and of your most indulgent mercy in that where sin has abounded grace has abounded more but regard the troops of virgins holy boys and girls this kind has been trained up in your church there for you it has been budding from its mother's breasts for your name it has loosed its tongue to speak your name as through the milk of its infancy it has had poured in and has sucked no one of this number can say i who before was a blasphemer and persecutor and injurious but i obtained mercy in that i did in being ignorant in unbelief yea more that which you did not command but only set forth for such as would to seize saying whoever can receive let him receive they have seized and have vowed and for the sake of the kingdom of heaven not for you threatened but for that you exhorted they have made themselves eunuchs to these cry out let these hear you in that you are meek and lowly of heart let these by how much they are great by so much humble themselves in all things that they may find grace before you they are just but they are not are they such as you justifying the ungodly they are chaste but them in sins their mothers nurtured in their wombs they are holy but you are also holy of holies they are virgins but they are not born of virgins they are wholly chaste both in spirit and in flesh but they are not the word made flesh and yet let them learn not from those unto whom you forgive sins but from you yourself the lamb of god who takest away the sins of the world in that you are meek and lowly of heart i send you not soul that art religiously chaste that hast not given the reins to fleshly appetite even so far as to allowed marriage that hast not indulged your body about to depart even to the beginning one to succeed you that has sustained aloft your earthly members afloat to accustom them to heaven i send you not in order that you may learn humility unto publicans and sinners who yet enter into the kingdom of heaven before the proud i send you not to these for they who have been set free from the gulf of uncleanness are unworthy that undefiled virginity be sent to them to take pattern from i send you unto the king of heaven unto him by whom men were created and who was created among men for the sake of men unto him who is fair of beauty above the sons of men and despised by the sons of men on behalf of the sons of men unto him who ruling the immortal angels disdained not to do service unto mortals him at any rate not unrighteousness but charity made humble charity which rivals not is not puffed up seeks not her own for as much as christ also pleased not himself but as it is written of him the reproaches of such as reproached you have fallen upon me go then come unto him and learn in that he is meek and lowly of heart you shall not go unto him who dared not by reason of the burden of righteousness to lift up his eyes to heaven but unto him who by the weight of charity came down from heaven you shall not go unto her who watered with tears the feet of her lord seeking forgiveness of heavy sins but you shall go unto him who granting forgiveness of all sins washed the feet of his own disciples i know the dignity of your virginity i propose 
not to you to imitate the publican humbly accusing his own faults but i fear for the pharisee proudly boasting of his own merits i say not be such as she of whom it was said there are forgiven unto her many sins in that she has loved much but i fear less as thinking that you have little forgiven to you you love little i fear i say greatly for you lest when you boast that you will follow the lamb wheresoever he shall have gone you be unable by reason of swelling pride to follow him through straight ways it is good for you o virgin soul that thus as you are a virgin thus altogether keeping in your heart that you have been born again keeping in your flesh that you have been born you yet conceive of the fear of the lord and give birth to the spirit of salvation fear indeed there is not in charity but perfect charity as it is written casts out fear but fear of men not of god fear of temporal evils not of the divine judgment at the last be not high-minded but fear love the goodness of god fear his severity neither suffers you to be proud for by loving you fear lest you grievously offend one who is loved and, and loves for what more grievous offence than that by pride you displease him who for your sake has been displeasing to the proud and were out there to be more that chaste fear abiding for ever and ever than in you who hast no thought of the things of this world how to please a wedded partner but of the things of the lord how to please the lord that other fear is not in charity but this chaste fear quits not charity if you love not fear lest you perish if you love fear lest you displease that fear charity casts out with this it runs within the apostle paul also says for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but we have received the spirit of adoption of sons wherein we cry abba father i believe that he speaks of that fear which had been given in the old testament lest the temporal goods should be lost which god had promised unto those not yet sons under grace but as yet slaves under the law there was also the fear of eternal fire to serve god in order to avoid what is assuredly not yet of perfect charity for the desire of the reward is one thing the fear of punishment another they are different sayings whither shall i go away from your spirit and from your face whither shall i flee and one thing i have sought of the lord this i will seek after that i may dwell in the house of the lord through all the days of my life that i may consider the delight of the lord that i be protected in his temple and turn not away your face from me and my soul longs and faints unto the courts of the lord those sayings let him have head who dared not to lift up his eyes to heaven and she who was watering with tears his feet in order to obtain pardon for her grievous sins but these do you have who art careful about the things of the lord to be holy both in body and spirit with these sayings there accompanies fear which has torment which perfect charity casts out but with these sayings there accompanies chaste fear of the lord that abides for ever and ever and to both kinds it must be said be not high-minded but fear that man neither of defence of his sins nor of presumption of righteousness set himself up for paul also himself who says for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear yet fear being a companion of charity says with fear and much trembling i was towards you and that saying which i have mentioned that the engraft wild olive tree be not proud against the broken branches of the olive tree himself made use of saying be not high-minded but fear himself admonishing all the members of christ in general says with fear and trembling work out your own salvation for it is god who works in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure that it seem not to pertain unto the old testament what is written serve the lord in fear and rejoice unto him with trembling and what members of the holy body which is the church ought more to take care that upon them the holy spirit may rest than such as profess virginal holiness but how does he rest where he finds not his own place what else than an humbled heart to fill not to leap back from to raise up not to weigh down whereas it has been most plainly said on whom shall rest my spirit on him that is humble and quiet and trembles at my words already you live righteously already you live piously you live chastely holily with virginal purity 
and yet however you live here and are you not humbled at hearing what is not human life upon earth a trial does it not drive you back from overconfident arrogance woe unto the world because of offences do you not tremble lest you be accounted among the many whose love waxes cold because that iniquity abounds do you not smite your breast when you hear wherefore whoever thinks that he stands let him see to it lest he fall amid these divine warnings and human dangers do we yet find it so hard to persuade holy virgins to humility or are we indeed to believe that it is for any other reason that god suffers to be mixed up with the number of your profession many both men and women about to fall than that by the fall of these your fear may be increased whereby to repress pride which god so hates as that against this one thing the highest humbled himself unless haply in truth you shall therefore fear less and be more puffed up so as to love little him who has loved you so much as to give up himself for you because he has forgiven you little living forsooth from childhood religiously piously with pious chastity with inviolate virginity as though in truth you ought not to love with much greater glow of affection him who whatsoever things he has forgiven unto sinners upon their being turned to him suffered you not to fall into them or indeed that pharisee who therefore loved little because he thought that little was forgiven him was it for any other reason that he was blinded by this error than because being ignorant of the righteousness of god and seeking to establish his own he had not been made subject unto the righteousness of god but you an elect race and among the elect more elect virgin choirs that follow the lamb even you by grace have been saved through faith and this not of yourselves but it is the gift of god not of works lest haply any be elated for we are his workmanship created in jesus christ in good works which god has prepared that in them we may walk what therefore by how much the more you are adorned by his gifts shall you by so much the less love him may he himself turn away so dreadful madness wherefore forasmuch as the truth has spoken the truth that he unto whom little is forgiven loves little do ye in order that you may love with full glow of affection him whom you are free to love being loosened from ties of marriage account as altogether forgiven unto you whatever evil by his governance you have not committed for your eyes ever unto the lord for as much as he shall pluck out of the net your feet and except the lord shall have kept the city in vain has he watched who keeps it and speaking of continence itself the apostle says but i would that all men were as i myself but each one has his own proper gift from god one in this way and another in that way who therefore bestows these gifts who distributes his own proper gifts unto each as he will forsooth god with whom there is not unrighteousness and by this means with what equity he makes some in this way and others in that way for man to know is either impossible or altogether hard but that with equity he makes it is not lawful to doubt what therefore have you which you have not received and by what perversity do you less love him of whom you have received more End of sections thirty through forty one